malnutrition, dehydrated, stressed out, 14 hours of busting your ass, overwork, wearing multiple hats, doing multiple jobs, all with a smile on your face? Does this sound like your ideal job? Well, maybe you should try wedding photography. What's up? My name is Jay LeBlanc, wedding photographer and photography educator. Today I'm gonna to dive into what exactly wedding photography is. According to my very reliable source of Wikipedia, wedding photography is a specialty in photography that primarily focuses on the photography of events and activities related to weddings. Wow, whoever wrote that one? Oh man, hats off to you because you really nailed it. I know so much more than I did four seconds ago. Thank you for that one. They then go on to say, it may include other types of portrait photography of the couple before the official wedding day, such as pre-wedding engagement session in which the photographs are later used for the couple's wedding invitations. Well, that's engagement photography. What's wedding photography? On the wedding day, the photographer will provide portrait photography as well as documentary photography to document the different wedding events and rituals through the day. Well, there it is. That's it. I guess that's the end of the video, right? Thanks, Wikipedia. Now that we know absolutely nothing more than we did two minutes ago, let me explain to you what wedding photography is. Wedding photography is a combination of many different types of photography, not just portrait or documenting stuff. We're talking about almost every type of photography you can imagine from still life, architectural, portraits, fashion, automotive, documentary, photojournalism, and that's just on the easy wedding day. You're traveling with the bride and groom for the entire day, capturing everything that happens along the way. So you might ask, what does a typical wedding day usually look like? If I'm going to follow the bride and groom around all day long, what are they even doing? If you've never been part of a wedding, you may have no idea. So I'm gonna break it down to the simplest form for you. Now, as we go through the wedding, I'm gonna give you some pointers. The most important ones you're gonna wanna listen to is when it's time to take snack breaks. Because on a wedding day, you don't get many opportunities to eat. So when the opportunity arises, take it, trust me. A wedding day for me and with my business usually starts off with me, with the bride and all the girls as they get ready. This is where they're gonna get their hair and makeup done. They get together in the morning as they start preparing for the day. During this time, I'm gonna get pictures of jewelry and invitations and the girls getting their hair and makeup done and capturing some of those raw emotion of the moments that are just happening as some of these best friends and family members are hanging out, celebrating one of the most special people in their lives. And I always shoot with two photographers. You know why? Because usually when there's a wedding, there's two people getting married. Has there ever been a wedding with three people? That'd be weird. I mean, if anybody wants to get married where it's three people, I would love to do it because that would be awesome. And my second photographer is gonna be with the guys getting ready, taking pictures of their suits and ties, shoes, socks, cool watches, cufflinks, and all the other cool details that the guys have that makes their wedding unique. We capture all the raw emotions of the bride getting into her dress, the dress that she's been dreaming about since she was a little girl, often with mom helping her zip up the bag as she's about to send her little baby off to be married. We get some of her best friends or sister helping her with her jewelry and her earrings and you just get beautiful moments that happen between all of these people who are friends and family with each other and the same thing's going to happen with the guys usually the dad or the brothers will help the groom get dressed now i know most guys don't typically help each other get dressed but it's nice seeing the dad straighten out the tie or the brother come over and throw the vest around the groom it just makes for some really good pictures and it ties everybody in together to show who was part of that wedding day once the bride and the groom are fully dressed they're still separated from each other they haven't seen each other yet sometimes we'll do a first look which is when the bride and groom will see each other before the ceremony and then sometimes we're going to go a more traditional route where we go to a church and i'm going to kind of give you the timeline of the more traditional route. So we head off to the church. This is where the bride and groom actually get married. They make it official. There's a priest or an officiant there who is going to be conducting the ceremony and make them officially husband and wife. During this time, there's not a lot of creative control that happens because you're really just capturing what's happening in those moments. Yeah, you can get pictures of some of the guests as they wipe tears away or the flower girl as she's looking over her shoulder trying to figure out what exactly is going on because she might be too young to totally understand. And this is where that photo journey journalistic approach comes into play. You're also taking in all the beauty of a big, beautiful church, sometimes hundreds of years old, where the architecture and the stained glass windows and just the natural woods that really make that church what it is in all of its beauty. Pro tip right here. If you're gonna shoot a wedding, when we're driving to the church, 
this is a great opportunity to go ahead and take that first snack break. After the church ceremony, the bride and groom usually hang out at the back of the church as all of their guests exit. At this time, they get an opportunity to say hello to all of their guests. And during this time, I'm usually having my second shooter get some of those interactions between the bride and the groom and all of their guests. And what I'm doing is I'm back in the church setting up a couple lights because usually during church ceremonies, you're not allowed to use lights. So what I like to do is I set up lights afterwards and this is where I'll do some family portraits. I'm gonna take pictures of the bride, the groom and their immediate family and their bridal party inside of the church. After we get those pictures, usually we'll get a shot outside of the church and then a couple pictures with the bride and groom next to their car or limo or whatever cool form of transportation they have to take them to the next location. Because often brides and grooms book some really cool vehicles to transport them around. I mean, it's your wedding day, right? Why not rent the Lamborghini that you've been dreaming about since you're a little kid. It's only like three grand for a couple hours, right? Yeah, might need to pick up a couple extra shifts to pay for that one. Next, we're gonna head off to do the official portrait session with the bride and groom. Whether that is at a park that's maybe between the church and the venue, or we just do all the pictures at the venue if they have really nice grounds. Now this being the second time we're moving in our car, another great opportunity for snack break number two. Trust me, use this one. Maybe get in a little caffeine if you need it at this point because we're in it for the long haul after this. Once we get to the park or the venue, this is the opportunity to create those beautiful images of the bride and the groom on their wedding day. Usually when I personally shoot weddings, I'm photographing just the bride and groom for 45 minutes to an hour. It allows us to really explore the area of where they chose to take their pictures as well as get some really fun creative stuff. After doing the pictures with just the bride and groom, we're gonna do some more pictures with the bridal party. We're gonna take pictures of the bride with all of her bridesmaids together. And we're gonna take pictures of the groom with all of his groomsmen together. Some people might like to do this before the church. Personally, I like to do it afterwards because then I can also do the whole bridal party together. I also like to do pictures of just the bride with each one of her girls individually, as well as the bride and the groom with any additional family members that we didn't already get at the church. This is where we'll get the extended family or any other people people who are really important to the bride and groom. After these pictures are over, we usually lead into cocktail hour. During this time, if you're allowed to go to cocktail hour, make sure you ask first or put it in your contract. This is a great opportunity to get some good food that's not just a granola bar or an apple. But also during this time, I'm in the reception room where I'm photographing the table, the decorations, the flower arrangements, the centerpieces, everything that they have chose to make their wedding day unique and special. We have to capture it all because all of it is there for a reason. It's important to that couple. They chose that venue for a reason and they chose those decorations for a reason. So you gotta make sure you capture it all. Because in all honesty, your pictures are the only thing that they're gonna have to remember it. I also love to use this time to grab the bride and groom the last 10 minutes of cocktail hour, bring them into their room. They get to see it all set up and beautiful before anybody goes in. And you get a really cool picture of the two of them dancing on the dance floor with the room all set perfect just the way they imagined it. And a lot of couples really appreciate that picture. And if you're not allowed in cocktail hour, this is your last opportunity to really eat something real quick because it's about to be go, go, go for a while after here. Once cocktail's over, we go right into our reception. In most weddings, the way a reception will go is all the guests will come in, they'll sit down at their tables, then the bridal party will get introduced into the main room as well as the bride and groom. The bride and groom will share their first dance. Then they'll usually have the bride dance with her father and the groom dance with his mother. After that, there's usually a toast where the best man and maid of honor will usually give a speech and sometimes a parent or two will also give a speech just talking about how amazing this couple is, how awesome it is that they're together and getting married, and sometimes trash talking a little bit, which is honestly my favorite part. I always really appreciate it when a best man will tell the bride how beautiful she is and tell the groom how lucky he is to find her and then, you know, bust his balls a little bit and make fun of him. Tell some stories that maybe you don't want mom and dad to hear on your wedding day. Those are my favorite. After that, it's really a lot of partying. Out on that dance floor with all their guests, dancing, having a great time. Watch out, there's always that one person for some reason can't hold on to their drink and it shatters glass all over the dance floor. Don't be that person if you're a guest at a wedding. It's it's rude. But you're out there capturing everything that's going on throughout the night. All the guests interacting with the bride and groom as well as later on in the night, usually there's a cake cutting. This is when the bride and groom will cut their wedding cake and you get to document some of this because usually they're trying to have a little bit of fun. They'll take the cake and smash it in each other's faces. And let me give you a tip. If you're a photographer who's interested in shooting a wedding and it comes to the cake cutting, even after they fed each other, keep your camera up and get ready because so often everybody's all nice and delicate and it's like, oh, I won't mess up your makeup or I won't mess up your nice tux. And they feed each other and they're chewing, they kiss. They're like, oh, this is pretty good. And the groom's standing there with the plate in his hand and he just goes, 
boop, it happens more often than not. So like I said, just keep the camera up, keep shooting. That's my big tip for the day. And then usually at some point during the reception, I love to take the bride and groom outside or a different room and get a nighttime picture of them, which is just something unique and a little bit different than the pictures we were taking earlier in the day when it was light out. So what type of gear do you need to shoot a wedding? Now my recommendation is assist somebody else first, second shoot, third shoot, offer to be a tag along. Don't just jump right into wedding photography. But when you're ready to lead shoot, the recommended gear that I would suggest would be at least two camera bodies. If something happens to one of them, God forbid a guest bumps into one, something breaks, something falls off a table, you still have another camera body. Because if you only have one at a wedding and there's an accident and that one breaks, well then what are you gonna do? How do you keep covering the wedding? If you have two camera bodies and one breaks, you at least still have one to finish off the job. It's also really nice to have two camera bodies with different lenses on them, hanging off each shoulder. That way, instead of having to change lenses, you can just quickly grab a camera body with a different lens on it that allows you to capture more of those once in a lifetime moments. Weddings happen very quick and you always wanna be ready. I would also recommend a variety of lenses. Sure, there are some lenses that are like a one do it all lens, but if we're using two camera bodies, we're obviously gonna need two lenses. I would usually recommend something a little bit on the wider end and then something maybe 50 to 85 millimeters. So if you're gonna go with zoom lenses, maybe a 16 to 35 on one camera and a 24 to 70 on the other camera will be a great option. If you wanna add a third lens, the 70 to 200 fills out a wedding kit perfectly. If you prefer prime lenses, I would suggest something like a 24 or 35 on the wider end and then something like a 50 in the middle and then a 85 or a 105 to have something a little bit more telephoto. That way you can get pictures of people picking their nose across the room, right? Remember, we're capturing everything that happens. One of my favorite comments I get from people is, oh my God, I didn't even realize that happened. When did you take this picture? Now, even if you don't use it, I really recommend having a flash because at some point, I guarantee you, you're gonna wish you had one. You're gonna walk into a wedding venue, it's gonna be super dark and shooting without a flash just won't be a realistic situation. So having a flash is a great move. Personally, I roll six flashes to every one of my weddings. I have one for each of my camera body and then up to four that I could put around the room to help light it up if I don't love the lighting that's already in the room. Another thing you're gonna need, lots of batteries. You're going to be shooting for a very long day. A shorter wedding might be six or eight hours, but some weddings will go 14, 16 hours. And if you have two weddings back to back, one on Saturday, one on Sunday, you're gonna need a lot of batteries because you just won't have enough time to charge that many batteries. So I always recommend have enough batteries to run your camera for almost two days straight. You're also gonna need a lot of memory cards. Memory cards are cheap, buy a lot, have extra. Don't put two weddings on one memory card. Because what happens if something happens to that one memory card? Well then, you're screwed. There's no, there's no other way of putting it. Yeah, and uh, maybe think of another career. And then for all those lights that you're going to have that you're gonna to need to put up, you're gonna to have to put them on something. So you're probably gonna need a couple light stands. Getting a couple good quality light stands that go at least nine feet up is a great option. Having a light stand that's a little bit more heavy duty will help save your flashes should they accidentally fall if somebody you know, kicks it as they walk by because a wedding room is kind of dark and it happens all the time. People bump into the light stands. No matter how far out of the way you put them, people are going to hit them at some point. So just get ones that somebody could accidentally bump into without it completely falling over every single time. And the last thing you're obviously gonna need is a computer. Some way of processing these pictures and hard drives because you're gonna be taking a ton of pictures. Typical wedding for me, I'm shooting between three and 4,000 pictures. Now on the Canon R5, that is a lot of hard drive space. So you're gonna need somewhere to put all these pictures. So using external hard drives goes a long way and having a computer that you can process these pictures on. I know some people like to edit their pictures on an iPad, but with large files, it makes it a little bit more difficult. I'm not saying you need the latest and greatest computer, just something that can process your pictures. Weddings can be pretty challenging, but they can also have a lot of rewards. Some of the most rewarding things about being a wedding photographer, you're capturing probably one of the most important days in two people's lives as they come together. The day that they get married, you get to go to this beautiful big fun party where everybody's dressed up for me right i'm the guy capturing it uh, if it wasn't for me nobody would know if you were dressed up or not so i like to look at it as everybody gets dressed up for me and thank you. i appreciate it everybody's really enjoying themselves good food good music and family and friends that get to see each other who maybe haven't seen each other in years if you're good at the business side of wedding photography the money can be pretty good as well the people who are getting married and all of their guests are looking for this great experience so everybody's there to have fun so you get to have fun with them i mean that sounds a lot better than sitting at a desk and probably the best part about wedding photography is you get to give somebody something that will outlive them generations from now their grandkids great grandkids great great grandkids when they want to know about 
that wedding. What do they have to look back on? They're not going to get any food. They're probably not going to know what music was played, but they'll have the pictures. And that's something truly special. You get to give somebody something that's going to last generations in their family. Because if you think back to your great, great grandparents' wedding or your grandparents' wedding, what do you have from that wedding? Maybe a wedding dress was saved, but other than that, probably only have the pictures. And it's really rewarding getting to provide that for somebody. But it's not all sunshine and rainbows. There are some challenges that come with the job. It's extremely high pressure and can be very stressful. You're dealing with once in a lifetime opportunities. You can't say, hold on, stop the ceremony. I got to put a new memory card in my camera or hold on. I need to figure out what shutter speed to be shooting at. Things happen and they happen fast and they're not going to stop for you. So you have to be ready. You have to understand the ins and outs of your camera and all the technical stuff. There's no redos when it comes to weddings. You can't redo a wedding ceremony. You can't recreate the party. So you got to be ready with whatever scenario is thrown at you. There's a lot of moving parts throughout the course of a wedding day. And a lot of it falls back on the photographer. Other than maybe the wedding planner or a wedding videographer, there's no other vendor for the wedding day that is with the couple all day long. If there's no wedding planner, the wedding photographer usually controls the time timeline of the day for the bride and groom of where they'll be and when they'll be there. Of course, they have time set for the ceremony and reception, but when the pictures are happening, where they'll be for those pictures, when they have to get ready, a lot of that falls on the photographer. So you have to be ready and confident in what you're doing to make sure that what you're doing is the right thing. And you have to be ready to deal with anything that might come up last minute from wardrobe malfunctions to inconvenience weather to people running late and traffic. No matter what it is, you have to be able to deal with it and do it with a smile on your face. Because if you get stressed, out, bride and groom are probably not going to be very happy. If you made it this far in the video and you're thinking to yourself, all right, Jay, so I like to suffer, but I also really love to make people happy. And I think I want to give this whole wedding thing a try. I'm going to ask you to do me a huge favor, like this video, subscribe if you haven't already, and leave a comment. Tell me if you've never shot a wedding before, what scares you the most about shooting one? And now you're asking me, how do I get started? Right? As I mentioned earlier, my first suggestion is going to be offer to assist another wedding photographer. Find a local wedding photographer who maybe you like their style or maybe somebody who you look up to and offer to assist them. Let them know that you're interested in shooting weddings and you just want to see what it's all about. Maybe you just go out and kind of shadow them and just watch them. Not even shooting, not even working. Just watch. See how a wedding day runs. See how everything's supposed to flow. You can watch a lot of YouTube videos on how weddings work, but nothing is going to compare to firsthand experience. My best suggestion to you is going to be just just get out there and go to a wedding. Go to a wedding as somebody who's working, not a guest. It's a totally different experience. I've had my students before come with me to weddings because they were interested in it, but they've never shot a wedding before. And they come to one wedding and they decide it's not for me. And I get that. Weddings aren't for everybody and that's okay. It's good to learn that it's not for you. But also I've had people come out with me who have never been to a wedding before and they shadowed me for a couple weddings and thought, I like this, how do I get started? And they became assistants and second shooters and they shoot for me on a regular basis now. And if you wanna get more into weddings, check out this playlist right here. If you found anything in this video useful, I'd love it if you give me a like and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.